I guess I can start the meeting with the preamble. Or uh, I thought maybe I should wait till Lauren's here because we don't have a quorum for a meeting right yeah. now. I don't see anyone in the attendees at the moment either, so. You have a phone number for Lauren? Maybe we could try calling her. No. I don't know that I do. Let me look. I don't think I do either. I should get that. She's often had a little trouble. Oh, I do. The subscriber you have dialed is not in service. If you feel you've received this message that's, error, please. That's not in service. Mm -hmm. um, so I texted to the email. Oh, that, that is Lauren. I see her listed. Oh, there's a for, ah, yes. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. So I guess we can get started. Can you hear and Lauren, can you hear? Okay, we are having have a hard time hearing you, but. Um... but I'm gonna call in as well. So. Oh, that, I can, that's, that we can hear. So I'm gonna read that preamble. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and renewed by Governor Maura Healey, this meeting of the Board of Health will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by following the instruction on the Board of Health posted agenda via Zoom. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings as soon as it is technologically possible. After this meeting, all approved Board of Health minutes are posted on our website once they are approved by the board. I will now open the August 10th, 2023 Board of Health meeting at 5.30 p.m. with a roll call. Um, uh, Tim? Yes? Lauren? Here and Maureen here. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just allowing Dave Zomack to become a, a panelist, but. Okay, great. Hello, Dave. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. I guess we, we get to introduce you later, but <laughs> welcome now. Sure. Um, our our first item on the agenda is to review the minutes of the July 13th, 2023 meeting. Um, and I guess they're just the three of us, but that's enough if, to approve them. It, it, does anybody have any corrections or um, concerns about those minutes? No, I didn't. Um, okay. So, we need to. I, uh, I can make a motion to accept. Yeah, the minutes. I forgot if we had to make a motion to vote on those, but I guess we have to make a motion for everything. Yes. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I can make a motion to accept the minutes of July 13th. And I'll second that motion. Um, Lauren, what is your vote? Yes. 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 Okay, Tim? Aye. Maureen? Aye. So the minutes are accepted. And now we have public comment and it does look like there are a few um, participants. Uh, public comment is limited to two minutes per person. Um, is there anyone who would like to make a comment at this time? I don't see any hands raised. No hands, okay. 
All right. Um, oh, we have we have one actually. Let me promote Jill to panelist for the two minute. Public. Okay. Jill, you might be seeing something on your screen pop up, um, prompting you to join panelists. So, oh, there she goes. Okay. Jill, I also prompted you to unmute yourself. Okay, does the comment have to be on last month's minutes or can it be on something new? What is the comment on? I think it can be on anything. Okay, I just wonder what, since I exercise in Amherst and see friends and shop in Amherst, I just wonder, is the Board of Health making any plans for possibly planning more hours for vaccinations and more publicity? Uh, if they're going to be vaccines for the respiratory illness for over 65, and if they're going to be vaccines for uh, the new variants coming in, are they making advanced plans at all? We don't answer these questions, but we appreciate the fact that you are bringing them up. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to say. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Um, okay, I just moved Jill back. Is there any other attendees that would like to speak? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, Lauren, is this the, is your number trying to join the 1074? Okay, I'll promote it to panelists as well. Oh, it doesn't allow me to promote a number to panelists, but I allowed you to speak during it. So you can use that function if you like. Um, so now I guess we're going to old business, um, and after the, uh, agenda was posted, uh, we learned that uh, neither Susan Malone nor Ed Smith could be here today, so, um, I think we have to postpone any discussion about the Simple Gifts Farm, uh, until the next meeting, uh, so that, will be be moved to September. Um, for this second item is from the toxic chemical regulation. And I'll let Tim or Lauren kind of pick that up. So in our last meeting, we decided that uh, there is no need for this regulation, uh, given that the uh, relevant offices are already pursuing it. Um, and then we suggested that we have guidelines. So when I started working on developing some sort of guidelines, it's really there is no essential need for a guidelines too, because um, the procurement office, the public offices, they are already using some sort of a, a green uh, type of substances. And so, um, it has to be some sort of a resource page available on the web on the board of health website so it's look like a guidelines it's just a bunch of resources from already existing links on the website so um so i would i would propose um, pro, i mean I, I would you know propose that uh, we don't uh, need a particular you know we will withdraw that toxic chemicals regulation proposal earlier and then I propose that we will have say a resource page for use of some, any type of toxic chemicals available for the public on the Board of Health website. I don't know if this could be a motion or. Well, I think if we're going to revoke uh, a regulation that would need to be a motion. 
but um, maybe we have had, had any conversation about that at this point. Um, I th it's certainly the regulation as it exists is really out of date and um, not not helpful. <laughs> um, and I don't think anything about it has ever been enforced. Um, I. I think I agree with the idea that some kind of information that's available to uh, residents of the town or maybe businesses of the town might be helpful and help in directing them towards um, the least toxic options for different kind of products, whether it's cleaning products or cosmetics or uh, garden products and so forth. Um, uh, you know, that kind of makes sense to me right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, as we decided on last meeting mm -hmm. that we, we don't have, we don't need that regulation. I think it will be something we have to vote on, revoking it. Right. That, that was the one for acid, acid free papers at the pub, you know, that's outdated, you know. Yes, so. yes. Can't hear you, Lauren. Okay. Lauren, I'm prompting you to unmute from the phone call. Can you hear me now? Hear me yes. Now? yes. Okay. 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 Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <Echo>. <laughs> oh. Um, um. I'm gonna to try to do it through this phone. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, I thought we had already voted on not uh, proceeding with a regulation or a, a toxic chemical regulation. Can't can't so, hear you right. Uh, my okay. It's just a volume issue that right then. Um, here we go again. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, now that's better. Okay, I might have to call in again. I was trying to do the video on one and speak on the other, but um, I thought we had already voted on not continuing with a toxic regulation. And to me, I'm concerned that if we try to not go ahead with guidelines, then we won't have anything for for, for people to, you know, departments to like I feel the regulations or guidelines are there so that, um, you know, people have some some impetus or some something to go on as to where 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 we are in a in a standard like what kind of standard we're trying to put forward in the town. And to me, um, the PFAS conversation with Turk kind of interjected itself in our in our thought process of you know what we wanted to do and so i'm just a little concerned about we keep like backtracking and i'm not really sure that's the best thing to do because there are um environmental concerns um that i think we should try to address in whatever guidelines we set so um, it sounds like, Tim, you're trying to say that we're not going to do guidelines at all, or? So, so guidelines right now, when we write, when we started writing the guidelines, it looks like it's guidelines only for the public offices, procurement office, or any type of a um, public use of chemicals. And 
And those guidelines are, uh, I think I would say they are muted only because we heard that these officers are already proactively using some sort of a uh, non-toxic green chemicals. So even if you have guidelines, I think uh, it really is muted. You know, it's, there's no purpose to that. So even PFAS is not something they are, uh, uh, they are a big source. PFAS is a contaminant, you know, which is, which is coming from a variety of diffuse sources. So really, I think our guidelines or even our regulations have to be on the public procurement office and looks like they are already at, uh, uh, using some sort of a, the, the minimally toxic chemicals. So, but I agree with your point about, you know, this is a very important problem and, uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll see that what additional thing we could bring in beyond the federal government regulations on all these contaminants like EPA, then we have state uh, regulations, which are very strict from the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, and beyond that one, I think um, usually the town has some sort of regulations if they are not covering the state regulations or federal government is not covering it, but looks like you know there is standards established uh, for both at, at both those levels. So, um, so regulation was some sort of a muted only because I think uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's already the officers are not, you know primarily following guidelines for minim minimizing that. So. Um, so even if we can recognize it, I think it's more of education rather than uh, regulating, regulating or you know, uh, regulating. It's a guidelines uh, are primarily for those offices. But I'm I'm proposing that we have this information resource available for everyone, not just for uh, office office public offices, but also for businesses, residents, and and then it's primarily links. Uh, to many of the sites which are already there, you know, online. I don't know if I'm clarifying that. So have we already made that information resource, you say? Because I, I'm not... I'm no, no, we haven't... Uh, not, uh, okay. I'm proposing that because we I have to... Thing have a, that information on our public health site. Um, Why wouldn't we want to do that? I, I know you said that there's already state and federal guidelines and regulations, um, but is it putting the work in? Um, We're losing the volume again, Lauren. I said, is it that we don't want to put the work in because we feel that um, the state and the federal guidelines are already there? Yes. Um, I, th I think the main purpose is um, the resources are already there, but it may not be needed for us to uh, replicate it again. But uh, one of the suggestion is if we have a, some sort of a summary type of thing where people can go and see quickly what what type of things they could they could use as alternatives. Just like we provide um, information about vaccinations or information about COVID or other things, you know, it might be helpful to have that type of link over there. I know the, the state is working on PFAS guidelines. And that's, I guess, where I got stuck about Amherst regulating that. It's such a complex situation yeah. that is um, really, it seems to be also like a moving target right now um, that I don't know we have the resources to uh, make an adequate regulation or enforce one if we did 
And I think I don't think there are any other towns that all, that regulate toxic substances on their own in Massachusetts. I may be wrong about that, but I think that Nancy had mentioned that in some of our previous discussions. And and you're right, Lauren. We did already vote to not change the toxic chemical regulations to guidelines. And thinking about that now, guidelines are are kind of for a health board, kind of a no man's land. It's not something you can enforce. It's not something, you know, it, it, I don't know how, how much meaning that has, even if we do do that. I think we all want to reduce the amount of toxic chemicals in our environment and make people, you know, help people be aware of, of that in the things they use every day or you know, even in things like the fire department, you know, it's probably the PFAS is like the fire department might be this one place that has a significant source of those types of chemicals with the flame retardants and things like that. Um, but it's, yeah, it's I think it's a, one. yeah, it's, it's a, I, I agree that it's a complex one, but also regulations are being developed, I would say, in the at the federal level and the state level. Mm -hmm. um, but it is an important topic. Uh, that's why we have so many uh, uh, standards and regulations from water quality to air quality and everything. So um, one thing is uh, um, uh, the proposed uh, regulation or guidelines if they are not, it's, if they are muted, if in terms of if they are already um, following some sort of a safe standards, uh, why have a regulation to actually, which is not helpful, <laughs> uh, or or a guidelines which is not helpful? So what, that's what uh, that's why having a it's not worth having a guideline. Uh, also, it just if we can appeal to some sort of a education and awareness through some sort of a providing resources, I think that might be a better way. And then maybe in the future, there might be potential gaps where town can step in. So if the federal and the state hasn't uh, regulated and they are not monitoring certain things and the town is actually having some specific issue, then we can actually develop that's what happened to our regulation earlier. The toxic chemical regulation, which we, which we discussed before, was for having this type of a procurement of some papers to be acid-free, and that's outdated. So, but we can update it to make it relevant, even guidelines. And and I just. Um, I just, I don't know, like I said, if, if we need more people to help us with the work, but it just seems that we're trying to reduce what we're doing because one, it might be too much work or two, we don't, departments don't necessarily have to um, abide by a guideline but I, I just feel like in this environment of like um, the climate change and um, the flooding that's going on and you know all the things that can impact a person's environment I just I don't see why it would hurt to to have guidelines like I feel like you know I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like we we were talking about this for two years. So, and um, because there are many departments and agencies that might be affected, it seems like we don't really want to handle it. But we, as the Board of Health, I think, are like you said, information, but also it might be 
good for us to add what would be relevant for guidelines. You know, I just, I just, I just, I don't know. I just feel we started something and now we're not doing anything. I know you both of you worked on these more than I, I did. I, I just read through some of the different drafts. Um, I did find that there's some fairly um, thorough resources when I was looking at things like the Tory site from the UMass Lowell that addresses a lot of the issues that uh, come up, I think, including things like PFAS and and uh, lawn chemicals and different, you know, it just has options that they're not effective for, for the, the uses that people, both the town and uh, other like residents might, might uh, be able to use. Um, and, but, I guess between that and the regulations that already exist at the state and federal level, I'm not sure what we add to that at this point in time. But I could be convinced, I suppose, but I, I don't, I just don't know. Yeah, I think I we spent see it right now. We, we spent a lot of time exploring what's the specific need for a regulation or a guideline. And it's primarily pointing out saying it's already done in, in, a, in a many more specified focused areas. And um, if we are going to propose something it's as, as a resource, it's going to be pointing to a EPA site or a DPA, DEP site or a TURI site um, for the resources. So. I don't think we, you, I agree with Maureen that we don't, we are not essentially adding anything uh, in terms of, you know, what value it brings in. It's not about uh, resources. I think we could always find resources, you know, staff resources to compile it, mm -hmm. but we have already spent a lot of time on that. And then, and then finally it boils down to actually focusing on procurement department. <laughs> And so it's a it's a regulation of the procurement department, our guidelines of the procurement department. And I think in last meeting or the meeting before, we found that the procurement department um, is already actually following some of the safe guidelines. And I don't know what else value it'll, this will bring in. I, I know, you know, I think it's of times in the past that we've discussed um regulating specific chemicals of concern like um, glyphosate, the Roundup, for example. Um, and I think in some ways we found the similar outcome in that, that we checked to see how much Roundup the town used. And it was extremely small amount for very stubborn poison ivy. Um, the idea that we wouldn't sell Roundup in the town seemed complicated because you, you, people could get that in any other nearby town, um, you know. So I think some of the the uh, conclusion was to focus on education and um, information uh, rather than a regulation, but. That may change. You know, there there could be some circumstances that more information is available, or there might be some changes and things like that. But that might be something that could be dealt with on a one at a time kind of basis. If we feel like the state isn't doing as much as we wanted to do, I don't know. Is is I just one wonder where we should go from here. It would seem to not all be quite on the same page. Um, would it maybe be helpful to see what the, these resources, you know, just another view of what these resources are and how that might be put into 
to affect. Um, I don't know if that would be helpful for us to consider. Um, we're going to have a new health director soon. We're going to see what the health director can do with some of this information um, in terms of the value of putting it on the website. And that's really in their purview. Um, I can say um, briefly that if the board did decide to do away with the guidelines or regulations and you guys just want me to put it up on the Board of Health website, that's something I can do. So depending mm -hmm. on what that decision is, that's something that is possible. Since we already voted on uh, not doing the regulations before, mm -hmm looks like there is a difference between a guideline and a resource. Resource is a much better one. Guidelines is going to be focused on only procurement department. It's, so it's essentially muted in terms of mm -hmm. what we are going to suggest to them. But resource is going to broaden in terms of usefulness, um, in terms of business, businesses, residential customers, um, you know, any type of garden usage. So I think resource is a better option for us. So I know we probably have a lot of those on hand, you or Lauren. Yeah. Um, would it make sense to just pull those together for us to look at uh, one more time in one place and uh, take look at it in our next meeting? And oh, no, no, no. The, the, the revised uh, regulations and guidelines doesn't have much resources. No. Those are scientific uh, arguments for regulating certain things all right but so I resources think you means these are the have looked at them you know in terms of yeah you could identify them pretty regular pretty easily yeah that won't be a resource which is you know these are scientific papers and stuff like yeah. that so what i was suggesting is providing a link to turi mm -hmm. for procurement providing a link to some sort of a um, sustainable gardens mm -hmm. you know th that type of links provided in a one page uh, maybe someone at the health department can help to compile it. And we can post it on the on the site. Yeah, so. what should we do a little work to just uh, identify the, some of those resources, the ones that look like something you would find helpful uh, outside of Tory EPA and mass DPH? I, I I that might help us understand what we're putting out there a little bit. I don't know. Oh, you mean the uh, guidelines? Some yeah. as a classification? Well, not a guideline, but just, you know, what are those resources? I know we know of a few of them, but it, could we see what that page might look like those links, what they yeah. are, and what. Yeah, maybe I think I can help Kyle to actually just mm -hmm. to classify who the, you know, who the specific categories are. And then maybe we can, the board can look at it. In the yeah, future. you can share that maybe yeah. with everyone. We could do that, yeah. And see where we continue to go with this um, as we think through it. Yeah, Tim, if you want to email me, we can set up um, sometime next week. Or if you want to send me whatever information you want to compile, uh, we can work on that and then present it to the board at the next meeting to approve if, if that sounds good. Yeah, the, uh, this month is very busy for me, you know, so, but I can provide some sort of a broad classification of resources and then some potential and maybe you can find the correct exact links and uh, we could we could work on it early September, you know. Yep. That's hopefully it will be done before. <laughs> yeah, I'll be away this August, you know, the remaining of the August. Sounds good. And I don't know, Lauren, I don't know if you can look at other cities or towns and see if anyone has a toxic chemical regulation or anything else that's out there. Um, 
I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I can do that. Okay. I'd be curious, you know, just to see if there's something like that that exists that seems to make sense in, in for Amherst. Um, so we'll, we'll keep plugging away, I guess, is the, the, but David has some hands raised. Excuse me? Maureen, I, I just jumped in there for a second with my hand raised. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, um, I was listening, you know, intently to your conversation. I, I just came back from the Cape where I have some relatives who live on the Cape and certainly some of the Cape towns with uh, their sole source aquifers and and uh, groundwater issues are looking at these kinds of things. I know Orleans, Brewster, um, I think Wellfleet. I know um, Orleans is looking at at these kinds of issues very closely. So I just offer that as mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure on their websites uh, there may be some drafts and 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 they're identifying many of the same things um, that you you are talking about here today and the complexity of them. Um, so I just offer that as perhaps a source to, to research if you aren't aware yeah. of some of those Cape Towns looking at these. Thank the, you. These were the uh, regulations we looked at, but there was a very clear uh, focus on that, protecting the sole source aquifer. We are not doing that here. <laughs> that means what, what, what it means is the aquifer where the drinking water supplies you you need to provide guidelines in terms of contaminating that aquifer. That, that's totally different from what we're trying to do here. And when we started looking at what is our focus area, it, it boiled down to procurement. Mm. And then it, it it's essentially there is no uh, impact in our in our mm. town. You, I, I, so I think I, you, I agree with you. There are towns which are actually regulating soul source aquifer has a toxic chemicals regulations discharge into the aquifer. And that's a totally different one uh, in terms of our focus and our focus on is on procurement, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I know that towns are like Nantucket and, and Martha's Vineyard, you know, also with the sole source aquif aquifer, we're talking about not, you know, banning uh, the synthetic playing fields and things like that, because that that's a source of chemicals that they didn't want to contaminate their aquifer. And we, I mean, we did talk about, you know, the town, we weren't charged with making a decision about the um, turf field, but we did make a recommendation against the turf field, but that has, has I don't know where that actually stands right now, but um, yeah, so yeah. those single I, things that come up in our in that may come up from from time to time. Yeah, I'm coming in, you know, mid midstream on this, so I wasn't yeah. suggesting a direct correlation between the way you know we do not have a sole source aquifer here. I wasn't suggesting that. I was more to the you know kind of the education what Tim was talking about in terms of outreach and education and you know, many of the Cape Towns and have explored uh, strict regulations, but also done a lot of outreach to their residents about herbicides, pesticides, uh, spraying on lawns, and, you know, many mm -hmm. of the things that I think the town of Amherst, hopefully residents should be doing, but there may be other ways to achieve those goals uh, short of regulation. But anyway, thanks. Well, we can explore that a little further, I guess. Thank you. Um, so the next topic on this list is the body art regulations. Um, and I, I, I guess about two or three weeks ago, sent out a, a pretty clean copy. Um, and actually just yesterday, I think I sent out a slightly updated copy just so we would all be on the same page. I just found some typographical errors and a few order issues in matching the index with the actual document. Um, 
And so I just wondered if there were comments or questions about about that or any errors or con or or anybody have anything to say about it? So I think you know it's a very well written compilation of all the aspects of that regulation. I have some couple of suggestions, just some clarifications. One, you know, um, on page 10. 10? Yeah, page 10, we have all these prohibitions. Yes. And then we are saying there is a uh, waiver on that, say, praying unless performed by a healthcare, yeah. unless performed by a professional. I'm just saying, instead of repeating that unless. Uh, maybe we should say uh, prohibition, the following prohibitions, um, are, are, are following activities are prohibited, and then have that I could do that. Quote, I, I took this just from one. another document, and I, yeah. I, you know, it did seem quite. Uh... Yeah, it's a simple one. We'll just say unless followed by a professional healthcare licensed okay. from Commonwealth, and, and then have one item on the heading. Uh, and then we can delete all those extensive repeating unless, unless, okay. unless in every area. So I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, th there's a lot of repetition in this document. And um, because it separates out yeah. the, essentially some very almost identical or uh, information for the different types of licenses and and but it you know but it's it's set they're listed separately but i think it's a little clearer that way um yeah. for that but i i i yeah this other listing thing um i think we could shorten um shorten it uh by just lumping it together a little bit yeah other one is on uh, page nine. Um, we talk about um, no piercing shall be performed on a person under the age of 14. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just curious if should ha we have any type of a um, condition or allowance for some sort of a cultural type of thing, you know? Well, ear piercing is allowed. It's allowed. Okay, so it, this doesn't, it doesn't apply to the that piercing one. of the earlobes. Okay. Um, so right. So I, I think um, somewhere at the very beginning, the, this it says that that's um, not included okay. in these regulations. It just um, so so that doesn't apply to to that type of piercing. Um, I don't know if there are other things culturally that would apply there, but um, you know, I know in a lot of cultures, the babies are have ears pierced at, yeah. at birth, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And certainly a lot of kids in multiple cultures get their ears pierced when they're six or seven years old or whatever, um, when they push their parents to allow them to do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it, the ear piercing is separate from those regulations. Yeah. Um, Maybe I think uh, it's it has to be clear in our definitions. Or well, I it's right. It, I remember seeing that. It it should be. It's really in the very beginning. I think somewhere. On, on page eight, exemptions, a, a, a section five, part B, individuals pierce only oh, okay. the lobe of the ear. So those are exempt. Oh. Those are your, yeah. Excellent, yeah. Um, I think it looks good. I think uh, with those minor edits on the details, I think it'll be it'll be good enough. Okay. And um, all right. I think it does say in many places that the board will set a fee for this, but we don't have to set that right now. 
Um, and when I, I think Jennifer said that that might be reviewed by some other committee or finance committee or some other fee setting body in town. Um, but the fees, First of all, I'll go back to Lauren. Do you have comments or questions about th this? Were you able to? It's yeah. quite. No. I looked it over, but no, I don't have any questions. Okay. And, you know, Premal and I, I guess both, Premal also said she looked this over. Um, so I guess the question is are we ready to vote on it? And um, so let me just go back to that question of, of fees. I think that can come a little later once it's passed. Um, I do have a copy of the, I think I might've sent this out that an establishment um, permit is $275 a year. If you're gonna be a tattoo artist, that's, uh, $250 a year, or piercing artist is $250 a year. If you do both, it's $325 a year. So I think our charge will be to um, put a, 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 a fee for an apprentice or a guest artist. And that's something that we might want to just be thinking about in terms, my thought would be they would be somewhat less than these fees because these are, uh, one it's short term and the other one is someone who's just a trainee but um but i wouldn't mind getting input from folks who set fees for such things um yeah we couldn't get an input uh yeah. from that but uh, i'm thinking if a regular purse uh, fee is let's say for the whole year yeah and if a temporary guest artist is coming for a month mm -hmm. uh, it has to be some sort of a one twelfth of that or something mm. i yeah Depending that's i was thinking time. that too although the, i the, the process of like vetting that person is that uh, is that something that the town thinks about in terms of setting you know any any of these fees but I, I was thinking something a little more than one twelfth but not, certainly less than the $250, you know, like $25 or $50 or something in that range. Um, if we can assume three months, that could be one fourth, you know. Yeah. That's a way, one way to think about it is just dividing by the months. <laughs> if, yeah, that would be fine with me if it's reasonable for the for what, how the town views these things. Um, and I, I yeah, and I, I just sort of pulling things out of the air, I was thinking $100 for the apprentice one, just because they're probably not making any money. <laughs> um, so is it, is it routine that we will have a, a hearing on this or? Yeah, is it yes, I think we would have to have Before we vote, right? Mm, right. Let's not I, vote now, you know, it has to be after. The hearing after the hearing okay yes. so i think we're ready to move to plan the hearing which yes. i guess yes. we could do at the beginning of the next meeting we could set a high time for that yeah i don't expect it to be a long hearing um so we can put that we can plan for the hearing and September i meeting for the September 14th meeting. And I will make those couple of changes that that uh, you mentioned. I think that'll shorten it by maybe a whole page, <laughs> um, which wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, all right, so we're making progress. Um, the last part of the old business is the Board of Health Succession. And um, I don't know if people have thought about that anymore. Uh, we're still waiting to get another member on the board. I have, I've heard that there were interviews, but I don't 
no one will hear about that. Um, when Jennifer sort of sent a little information, she said basically it could be pretty si simple. My, like, I guess my concerns were <laughs> for me, you know, I, um, during this period of time where I'm going to be out of town a lot, if some, my concern was I, something might come up quickly that I wouldn't feel I could respond too quickly. Um, I, I guess I found that that um, that actually the the nuts and bolts part of being the chair of, of the board isn't that time consuming in terms of the, working with the health department to set up the the agenda and um, and just trying to um, chair the meeting itself. Um, so and that that's pretty much, and reading that statement before the meeting begins. Those are the three chores that are kind of routine. Um, I, I guess my my concern is just if, like when COVID and we were doing uh, mask, mask mandates and vaccine mandates and things like that, I just felt like I might not be able to respond and read, look things up and kind of get organized for something like that on, a, on short notice. But I suppose we could- Can I, can I on comment on else. that? <laughs> <laughs> so um, any chair will have the same issue. Mm -hmm. People are traveling and, you know, it, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't be a problem because mm -hmm. if it's going to be, you'll be away and you can actually depute some other member to take care of, you know, business if something arises, you know, yeah, as a standby. So you could do that. It's not a, mm -hmm. so. Okay, it's not what, a really what are you thinking? One of my questions was, do we still have to vote or nominate the chair? Even though, I, I, I mean, I feel that we, haven't done that and I think other committees do that so I'm not that was one of my questions and um are we going to try to have any in-person meetings and kind of get to know each other's interests a little bit more I I just feel like maybe we should because there is that gap that you say you might not be available could we just assign like each member to chair a meeting just so that we can all get a feel of how it is and because I, I that's just my suggestion um, yeah i I know we we didn't really vote on who's who's going to be the chair, and I guess that is something that probably should happen. Um, I can interject quickly and just say something. Um, mm -hmm. Before Jen left, she wanted me to express to all of you in the meeting that the um, succession of chair is totally um, dependent on the board, so you guys can create a system one chair at each meeting or rotation or co-chair, but um, all that just is available and acceptable. It just has to be decided amongst all of you. Okay. I can think in, in in essence, the chairing, the, the actual chairing of each meeting isn't the problem that I, I feel um, that, so I feel like I could sh share the meetings that are coming up. I, I would be available at this partic particular predictable time. I guess, um, I, 
I, I guess my hesitation had been just the responsibility of it sort of hanging over for, for times when I'm, I'm otherwise occupied for two or three days a week during the fall and out of town, you know, for two or three days a week in, in uh, September in October through mid January. Um, so uh, I don't know if people want to take a turn if uh, we, we get assigned a to rotate like a running the meeting if people want if somebody's interested in doing that. Um, but it's just I guess having a backup it was the thing for me that I didn't feel like I I, I could hand. I, th I think uh, there should be consistency in the flow process. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, you know, if someone wants to, I mean, having like a monthly changes, I think the, the whole decision making and whole types of organization will start to be very chaotic. Yeah, I would say I, I agree with that. So we we had some sort of a discussion about this before when Nancy was there on succession, and I think. Uh, everyone agreed that you know you'll be an ideal person to actually lead it. So, if you know, I would suggest that um, you know uh, we should continue with one person, mm -hmm. and if that person is actually you know you're you're an experienced person, <laughs> um, and uh, and if you are going away, probably you can call in certain to someone to chair. Mm -hmm. And that is the best process to be consistent, you know, or else testing it out and everything, it, it'll be very, very chaotic in terms of the long-term process. Yeah. Now we have a very, we have a quorum here tonight, but it's pretty limited without Premla and without the new person. Um, do, do we... I guess I would say yes to being the chair of the board if people wanted me to do that. And with the, with the caveat that I might really call on others to, to help out when yeah. at, at, at different times. I think I I'm agree with that. I'm not going to be that, out yeah. of the country. Uh, that's <laughs> not, you know, it's not like I'm going to be far away, but I might, you know, be otherwise occupied at, at, with uh, things that are... With, Frankly, it's taking care of a two-month-old baby, <laughs> so I mean, it's a, or a three-month-old baby, which doesn't allow for predictability in one in the in the day. So, um, I don't know if the David, kid's gonna be asleep. David or... has his <laughs> hand raised. <laughs> what? David has his hand hand raised. Can Thank I just you. jump in, Maureen? So yeah, sure. I just wanted to reiterate what Kyle said, which is kind of normal process and procedure for committees and boards in Amherst, which is, you know, I think um, you you really should vote on, you mm -hmm. know, have a quorum tonight if you're if the group um, wants to to um, move for a chair and or a vice chair. You could have a a chair and a vice chair. You could have mm -hmm. co chairs. I've seen that happen or seen that seen that used. But I think somebody would need to make a motion, nominate one of you to be the chair. Maybe you have a vice chair. Maybe you have a, a rotating vice chair. But those could very well could work. Um, I think the other thing uh, I know Lauren had asked about um, about in person meetings, and I just wanted to comment on that. I think the guidance we've gotten from the town manager in the short term is that. I think he is strongly encouraging um, boards and committees to continue to meet by Zoom, uh, in in part because we can't we can't support hybrid meetings. That's our challenge. I think we just don't have the staff and the IT capability to have all the boards and committees um, meeting uh, in hybrid. Meaning some people could be at home and some people people could be in person. So. I, I think right now, I believe we're only doing that with the town council. There may come a time when we're all back in person and and I don't know when that might be, but um, I think that's the guidance we've gotten from the town meeting, uh, from the town manager. But I, you know, um, I just wanted to recommend mm -hmm. if you're ready to vote or somebody wants to nominate you or somebody else who's on the board 
that could happen tonight. It could happen at your next meeting, uh, whatever your preference is. Uh, is it okay if I do it? Hello? Hi. I, I, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I I feel that we should do something like a vice chair or co-chair because the you you stated that you you know there there are there is going to be some time that you feel that you can't fully or prepare or however you know you may feel about those certain months i just feel like it's better to set it up now so that there's another person if we want consistency there's another person in place whatever happens i i feel we should either do a vice a chair and a vice chair or a chair of co-chairs I, mm -hmm. I I feel like, you know, there's, uh, you know, maybe where where there's some hesitancy, you know, for whatever reason. And and you maybe it's just like the pressure of, you know, you feel like you can't be in two places at one time. I just feel like it would be if we want consistency, it would be better just to set it up. Whoever that vice chair or the co-chair is, it could be the i don't know how long we're going to wait like i said in the last meeting for the the new board member but i i would feel more comfortable even if it's not me i would feel more comfortable with a, a vice chair and a co-chair and i think you might feel more comfortable that way as well maureen but mm -hmm. i don't know i don't want to speak for you um again with this small group today i mean uh do do we want to have of the discussion which hopefully next month would include a new board member and uh premola uh, as you know so because i i think when we first spoke about this i said i could i would be able to be the chair for this these three months i don't think we voted on it but we we've been acting on it um mm -hmm. and um i i think the structure of having a vice i don't know the difference between a vice chair and a co-chair but but maybe a vice chair that would step in when when needed would be something that would be be helpful i think even the idea of co-chairs, I think who's doing what sometimes get makes things confusing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what tasks are, how the tasks are divided. Um, so, so I think the idea of someone who would be ready to step up if needed, that would be uh, the idea that I would think would be helpful. Um, So here is a suggestion. Tim, are you? Uh, okay. I, I'm thinking uh, we wait for you know much more number of members because right now we are only three here. So maybe next month we'll have five, mm -hmm. and we could make a decision about who you know voting up on a chair, and mm -hmm. then decide upon whether what type of a backup options we have for leadership you know right Tim, do you have any interest in being a vice chair or a co-chair no i i can step in i i think as i was saying you know uh i don't want a formal type of a vice chair report <laughs> thing is if 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 the chair calls in and say oh i'm going off this month can you just lead this meeting? I'll be glad to do it. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, I'm not very much into positions, you know. <laughs> uh, this is just my, so. I get that. <laughs> and I think uh, the, the, what the, the benefit of that is, um, 
if we have it, I think the main per, main focus should be on voting for a chair. Mm -hmm. And for the or the as a backup leadership, I think it should be left to the every member of the board to have an op opportunity to become a you know step into the leadership when the chair is not there. So the chair can actually call in, you know, because we don't know who will be around. You know, the white yeah. chair is also gone at the same time, and then we'll be back to the square. All right. So September, I think we can vote on it. All right. September is going to be a more <laughs> a lot a lot to do in September then. Um, all right. So Maureen, we're... are you sorry, are you going to be the chair for the September meeting? When yes, you I will be. Chair? Yes. Okay. All right, so where are we on our agenda here? Um, new business. Any new business? I guess we didn't have any. So if we move now to the director's update, we're welcoming Dave Zomek as our acting public health director. So yes, thank you for having me tonight. I do have to kind of apologize right up front that I have a I'm double scheduled tonight, so I can only be with you now for a few more minutes before uh, I need to be at a housing trust meeting in in 15 minutes or so. But no, happy to be here with you tonight. Just wanted to say hello. Um, you know, I'm happy to be filling in. Hopefully, very very short term in this role. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the assistant town manager. And I oversee a number of departments in town, um, planning, community development, zoning, inspections, conservation. Um, I've helped out in, in uh, this acting role with the recreation department um, a number of times through the years. Um, my background is actually in biology, um, conservation biology. I've had a lot of project management experience. I do most of the um, land acquisition for the town and by golf courses and conservation land and oh gas stations say in North Amherst things of that sort so I'm I kind of do a lot uh, uh, around the edges here and there and I really my main goal in this interim period this acting period is is to support the staff there's a wonderful staff um, uh, wanted to acknowledge Jennifer Brown who you all worked with for a long time and and through the pandemic and a friend of mine and, and I have great admiration for her. But my main goal now is to support the staff, to support you and be a, a liaison for the staff and for you to the town manager in the event that the, uh, uh, some situation arose that was um, needed your attention and my attention. Um, I did wanna update you briefly on the search. Um, I talked to Paul Bachman late this afternoon. I've been part of the search um, and I'm I'm uh, optimistic, I would say, about how the search is going. I think we have some excellent candidates, and uh, I'm optimistic that um, that uh, Paul will move forward with that process very quickly. So I am happy to be helping out staff and you all, but um, I would very much like us to hire a new health director who can begin to to work with you and get situated in the bang center with with the staff and uh begin to to start a new a new um period here with with the health department um let's see what else i was going to say oh i would also encourage you all to be thinking as i'm sure you have um you know how you want to interface with the new director what are some of the priorities that you see in the town in the region in the state and i'm sure with all of your professional backgrounds you've already been thinking about that. What are some of those areas that um, you would like to see our health department um, work on in the in the coming years? So that's really all I wanted to say tonight. Again, I'm feeling very optimistic about the search and um, I hope that sometime in early September, um, again, I don't have an exact date on that and I don't have a crystal ball, but um, my hope is that we're we're moving quite quickly, swiftly with the search. If there's any questions, I'm happy to to take them. I've already met with the yeah. staff twice and had some good conversations with them, and 
And again, my role is to support their work and to support you during the month of August and perhaps part of, of September. And then hopefully we'll have a new health director. Thank you. I, I have a comment. Uh, uh, while you're here, I think uh, uh, the health department needs a lot of resources, <laughs> especially budgets. I think we had been, uh, uh, I would say, constrained on times of resources when we have so much of needs out there. Mm -hmm. So there should be some sort of increase in budget allocation. And, and I think. Uh, Everyone agrees, you know, I think Nancy was also um, asking for that, but I think since you are here as a mm -hmm. <laughs> as a leader uh, of the town, I think I think this is something we are there's so much of needs and we need those resources, you know, increased budget and staff and uh, mm -hmm. that type of investment. Thank and so it's very good for the town. Is, um, Nancy did some work in comparing uh, towns like East Hampton and North Hampton and the resources that they have in their health departments and they're considerably more than than Amherst has um yeah. even um you know I, I've I've forgotten the numbers but multiples of uh, the and it, it it's sometimes hard to compare things look like apples and oranges but I think she did a good job of you know respecting the fact that inspections are are not in our department, but just really looking at um, the resources and what Amherst has. And it, it's for a town its size and complexity, it, it's pretty limited. Are there, while you have me, thank you, Tim. Um, while you have me, are there, you know, um, could you be more specific about resources to be directed toward what kinds of priorities do you see? I don't want to take too much of your time. In um, oh. um, so the priorities, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, so we have um, the health director and we have a person helping a couple of them and they are some sort of a facing huge amount of demand in their workload. Um, I, I think this came out during the pandemic, you know, so how much work they have to actually ask for uh, volunteers and sometimes they are not, I mean, they are overworking and everything. So, but I think having a um, town which has some sort of a really uh, lot of uh, health demands, environmental demands and everything, I think having more than the, just the health, health director taking on multitasking of everything, having staff and also some sort of budgets, you know, uh, which they can actually spend on education. I think we thought we we proposed education, but looks like that is you know we have to look look for UMass students <laughs> or anyone. But having some sort of a dedicated staff people to actually invest in those types of fundamental changes in the health, I think um, that's what even for the um, the the access of uh, underrepresented communities. To healthcare, all these are very important ones. The emerging health issues. So, in order to have that, you know, having more staff, having more budget, I think it, it's always a good investment for the for the town to uh, to invest in the health department. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, no, thank yes, you. I should for... just add. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I don't know if the the board. Um, is able to find out how the health department is using the opioid settlement, settlement um, monies and how we can have initiatives, like create initiatives around youth and mental health. Um, and I know that the um, health department was a stakeholder in some of the um, ARPA funds that were allocated but it's like I'm I don't know if we are given a report or if you can update us but my um interest for the um board of health doing initiatives would be around mental health and and youth um 
involvement, um, whether, I, I don't know how exactly that would look, but just outreach initiatives and helping them learn more about um, safety or learn more about um, preventative measures to, to, to have more of a, um, a healthy outlook, um, you know, and basically mental health, mental health, um, any, any initiative that would support mental health that doesn't necessarily have to do with like counseling, but maybe like uh, initiative around um, more movement, more physical movement, more physical activity, or um, like the, the impacts of using um, electronic devices, like just things that, that are impacting them and how they can navigate and prevent those things from um, impeding or, or preventing them from doing the other things that they need to do. Um, so no oh, good. Those Thank you. My thoughts. Yeah, and I, and I think this is a real opportunity for the board. I took some notes here now, um, you know, about the status of, of any of the ARPA funds that were um, allocated before Jennifer uh, left. And um, I don't know specifically the status of the, uh, the opioid settlement, but I can look into that. But I think all of these are good to be pulling together your your hopes, your 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 vision, your concerns, i.e., funding, the size of the department to bring to the new director uh, when when they join the the, the town service um, to really um, help that person to orient to the town's needs and you know take a look at what are the strengths of of the department and the town. Certainly what I've heard in some of the interviews, uh, this may sound a little cliche, but collaboration that, that we mm -hmm. need to collab, we, I say the health department, there's so much opportunity for collaboration between the health department, the senior center, the Musanti Health Center, um, um, the recreation department, and many of the nonprofits in our, in our community. Not to say that we haven't been doing that, but it's a, potential growth area that we can really capitalize on. I'm not sure why I'm getting that feedback, um, but um, anyway, so collaboration with other departments, there's so much going on um, with, with um, as you said, Lauren, with, with concerns about mental health, but also physical health. And, you know, we have a relatively new recreation director, relatively new um, senior center director, and now we will have a new health director. So, I think there's so many opportunities for for collaboration and working together to um, you know broadly work on the on the health of our community and and those people who live here. So I think it's an exciting time to to kind of reset, and I I trust you all will be working with the new leader of the department. So it's it's a it's an exciting time. Thank you, uh, Kyle. Did you have your hand up? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention that um, Martha from the um, town offices came over to the health department a couple days ago, and she's kind of in charge of ARPA funding, I believe, and she was just kind of checking in with us and letting us know that she'll be looking into that. So hopefully by next meeting, I can connect with her again, and maybe we'll have an update on update on that. Thank you. And you know, I guess just, Dave, we... Nancy, we, working with you, some UMass students and uh, a faculty member, did get a good start on a community assessment uh, for Amherst, and I think that will provide some additional information to to uh, to work with in terms of issues around transportation, uh, food food access to healthy foods. Um, uh, um, and, and uh, underserved populations. So I think there there's, is a lot to work with um, and hopefully we can make some progress in, in uh, making us a healthier town. <laughs> yeah, and I, I neglected to even mention, you know, the connections that can be made and, and hopefully will be made with sustainability. I know, you know, as we, as we think about the situation we all find ourselves right now with climate change, 
Um, I know that um, the Conservation Department, as well as uh, Stephanie Ciccarello, our Sustainability Director, um, she is working on, um, you know, um, uh, increasing um, the number of uh, community gardens in, in town, working on, um, uh, with a number of groups on food security. So there's so many opportunities for our health director and our new health director and health department to, to work collaboratively. And, and um, you know, I know there's also a number of grants out there to kind of bolster some of those efforts. So again, I think um, there's, there's lots of reason for optimism here. So I do apologize. I do have to run to this other meeting, but um, thank you for allowing me to join you here for a few minutes. And my hope is that we might you know, again, I'm just being optimistic here. Um, perhaps uh, at your next meeting, we can introduce a new director um, and uh, um, I can uh, do a nice handoff and, and support that person as they get acclimated to the position. So um, I'll have an update for you um, in the weeks ahead. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Have a nice evening. Thank you. So uh, our next agenda item is topics not anticipated by the chair. I, I don't think there are any. Um, so I believe we're ready for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Lauren? Okay. I I move I I I, I agree. Okay. Tim? I Maureen? I. So we meet again um on September 14th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.